There are seven steps, seven essential logical steps in writing a successful protocol, research protocol. And it starts with the, the first step is identification of the topic, research question and objective. And the second step is outlining a concept paper. So this class is on preparing a concept paper. So in next uh, 10 to 15 minutes, I explain about what is concept paper, what are the advantages of writing a concept paper and how to write or uh, how to, what are the steps in writing a concept paper. Actually, what is this concept paper? Uh, it is your concept, your ideas. So you are organizing your ideas into a single one page concept paper and also this concept paper will help you to stand out among other competitors and to, to get noticed among other competitors and to get uh, receive a positive response from uh, uh, reviewers and also from funding agencies and also this will after writing a concept paper your inhibitions you will be overcome you will overcome your inhibitions for writing a uh, full-fledged or a um, very good proposal for a study. So you are, or I, I already told that you are organizing your ideas. So actually this concept paper should be in a single page. So that is why it is called a one page concept paper, single page. And why single page? As you know this time is precious for you as a principal investigator and also for your peers, your colleagues and also for the reviewers. So on looking, on the first look itself, they should get an idea, a concept of what you are going to do. And that is very important also. Okay. So in a, uh, as I already told, in a, a successful protocol writing, there are actually seven logical or systematic steps for writing a protocol. And the concept paper writing is the second step in a protocol writing. And this concept paper has got six steps. So the first step of any concept paper is background and justification. So, and everything should be in bullets also. Okay, so the first one is background and justification. In that, you have to, there are three bullets should be there in the first part. The first one is what is the importance of your project or your proposal, your uh, subject. And the second, what is known and unknown in that area in relation to the existing literature review and also the local context and the third one information missing or insufficient so what is the importance importance you can write as global consequences of the health problem the death disability effectiveness cost effectiveness of interventions and in that always avoid general statement you should be very specific in writing a concept paper and how this problem affect the locality. So that is the importance of the problem. Okay, you are going to study. And the second, what is known and unknown in the problem in relation to the literature review and also in your local context. The third is the information missing or insufficient to address the problem more effectively. And that is what you are going to study. So. Under the uh, first part, background and justification, there, sh there should be three bullets. Don't write one, two, three. Only bullet should be there. And what is the importance of the problem? What is known and unknown? And what is the information missing or insufficient? And second is objectives. You write two to three objectives. Can be listed under general and specific objectives. Or you can write it as primary and secondary objective. The uh, primary objective should be in connection with the uh, title and also the sample size should be in, uh, connected to the primary objective and uh, also it should be smart. I already explained it in previous class. Smart objective that is uh, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant and time bound also. And the third one is methods. Uh, actually there are specific criteria for the particular type of study design. And you have to uh, search the network is uh, equator. Okay, equator network. So, 
this website will give you the criteria for particular type of study. For example, we use spirit. This is for clinical trials. Spirit uh, is an evidence-based guideline uh, specific for interventional trials or clinical trial. And uh, there is Prisma. This, uh, Prisma is for systematic uh, review and meta-analysis. And again there is CARE. And this CARE is for case reports. Okay, CARE uh, guideline is for case reports. And for observational studies there is STROBE. Okay, all these you can get it from equator uh, dot network dot org so uh, go to that and see the guidelines for each type spirit for clinical trial prisma is for systematic reviews and meta analysis care is for case reporting and stroke is for observational studies operation definition then study design sampling procedures you have sample all these what is study design and the sampling procedure all were discussed in earlier classes so go to that and uh, study the different methods for each one and in a, if it is using a randomized controlled trial, you have to uh, write the method of randomization, then see sequence allocation and allocation concealment and also what is the dose, frequency and the type of intervention you are using. That is also important. Sample size you have to write in one bullet. Data collection method you have to. Analysis plan you have to write in a bullet. And next comes the ethical considerations. In ethical considerations you have to Write the key point you are using to protect the um, safety of the participant and also to which ethical committee, to which uh, ethic, ethics committee attached to which hospital you are going to submit your protocol for uh, human ethics committee approval. Okay, so this comes under methods, all these and one bullet per point you have to write. So the next one is the expected benefits. In that you have to write us uh, what is the expected output that will that the study will generate and also the timeline you have to uh, write. Then comes the proposed immediate action based on your output. Okay. Then comes uh, after the study uh, the ideas that generated or the output generated from the study and how it is going to affect the future research plans. That also you have to write. So the expected benefit comes under the expected outcome that the study will generate with the timeline. Then proposed immediate action taken on the basis of your expected output and also how you are going to um, generate research plan for future research. Then next comes the uh, 3, 4, 5. That is the references. 5 references. Not more than 5. Okay, and you should follow standard guidelines. We usually follow the uh, International Council for Medical Journal Editors. So, www.icmje.org. Okay, so these guidelines are usually followed, and uh, you can cite the uh, references in the introduction part and also in the methods part, uh, method section. Under the introduction and method section, you can cite the references and always link the statements with the references. Okay. So, the budget, you can write it as uh, for staff, for salary and per time, then transport, then supplies. Supplies include uh, uh, laboratory agent, then other uh, stationary items. And for um, certain equipments, certain uh, funding agencies will not allow for purchase of equipments like CT scan or MRI scan and also uh, miscellaneous that is uh, needed for conduct of the uh, proposed project. So all these can be given but incentives or remuneration for the uh, research guide or incentives for the participants to take part in the study such things are not allowed for funding. Okay and uh, <coughs> this funding Pattern will vary depending upon the agency you are submitting your proposal. There are also specific word count 
like the title should not exceed 25 words, introduction should not exceed 200 words like that. So there are so many funding agencies in India the, the main funding agencies are the ICMR or the Science and Technology, um, then projects under Health and Family Welfare Departments. So there are so many funding agencies. So think about this um, um, concept paper and after seeing this try to write a concept paper for a proposed project and uh, uh, submit it for funding in a very good um, research uh, funding agency. Okay, and remember these are the uh, six steps for writing a concept paper like background and justification, objectives, methods, expected benefit references and also the budget. Uh, always uh, you can stick on to this format unless otherwise the funding agency is giving you a particular format. This is the correct format for writing a concept paper. If you have got any uh, doubt, just ask me in the comment box. Thank you.